Welcome to Real Garage, Season 5, Episode 4. Today, I'm working through my dash problems. So the original 69 Firebird and Trans Am dashes were just okay. Actually, for me, they kind of sucked. The biggest thing is that the gauges are too small, and they're recessed deep inside here, which makes it harder to see. I also need to scrap the radio and all this stuff on the right side of the dash for some electronics that I'm installing. Don't need a radio anyway. Car makes its own music. So this dash is no bueno. I need a little bit more input on this project, so it's time to visit a friend who's done quite a few of these. Hey, so today I'm at Customs by Biggin in Mooresville, North Carolina. And I'm with owner, driver, racer, chassis builder, welder, fabricator, Eric Yost. Eric, tell us a little bit about what you do here. Uh, we do a little bit of everything. Um, you know, mainly uh, small tire radial stuff. Um, you know, a lot of the drag and drive stuff we do, uh, we've done a good bit of it. So. Uh, a lot of clients come to us to, to build their drag and drive you know, cars. Yeah, um, you're obviously pretty successful at it. Yeah, yeah, we've done pretty good with it. Um, a lot of turbo stuff. We do uh, turbo kits to straight up drag stuff, to street car stuff, uh, roll cage stuff. Um, you know, street rods. You know, we're not just just in one corner. We kind of you know do whatever anybody wants to do. So yeah, um, which is why I kind of came to you for a little bit of advice. Okay, <laughs> I got a dash problem. <laughs> So, of course you do. <laughs> yeah. So there's just so many options out there. I'm kind of an old school guy, but at the same time, I'm attracted to the nice big electronic engine control dashes, you know, that kind of stuff. So you've kind of done it all and I kind of just came for some advice, maybe some options, something yep, yep. like, you know, do, do I, I, I like the old school flavor, but at the same time, I still want to have all that touch screen availability to control my stuff. Absolutely. So. Yep. I'm the same way. I, I like the old school stuff and um, you know, don't want to change the look of uh, you know, something that's vintage or you know, period correct, but yeah. still have the fancy new electronics and stuff. So yeah. I'm the same way. So, you know, it's going in my 69 Trans Am project. This nice. is kind of what I'm working with. Yep. So I'm challenged with a couple of things, right? The dash is at this kind of severe angle. Yep. And so you know, I've built a ton of cars before and a lot of the dashes are more flat, but this is a lot more angled. And the distance between the steering column and say the top part of the dash is pretty narrow. So I'm really not gonna be able to be able to put a larger screen, you know, unit there. Right, right. So that's kind of my, that's my quandary. Right. So, any um, thoughts? Like my car, I've got uh, basically the same setup, you know, it's a Camaro, not the Firebird, but oh. you know it runs. Uh, auto meter gauges fit right into the first gen stuff. Uh, so I think I've got the white face ones on this one. This is going in my Pro Tour one. So okay, uh, you know that's one option to have the old school analog gauges. Uh, there's still GPS speedo and stuff like that, but then do a digital dash beside it. You know, so where you can do uh, GPS speedo and Holly dash or whatnot. So mm -hmm. um, that that's an easy deal that'll fit in a stock dash that's still analog. Uh, it fills the hole. It works good, quality stuff. Yeah. Um, and then you know, another, another one they got, you know, like a, a stock style fiberglass deal that you can put a race pack or holly or anything in uh, okay. in that deal. Got it. I still love the oh, gauges. Yes. Yep, yep. So, where do you put your digital dash then? Next to the, off to the side. I do, do it to the side. Yep. Okay. Yep. You know, within arm's reach and. Uh, you know, they've got the, the light modes and everything when you turn the lights on, it dimmers and all that stuff. So yeah, that would probably be what I would do. Cool. Show me what you got in here. Um, we got, you know, similar setup. Um, it's got... Uh, so old school gauges, uh, race pack dash, and then the holly dash. Um, yeah, so okay. we got cup holders, cup holders, uh, phone jacks. <laughs> so with the race pack dash, 
you know, the steering wheel, you can still see it okay, it's not really obstructed? Yeah, it works out really good. Um, you know, we got the uh, odometer and everything, you know, for our drag and drive stuff, we can actually set, um, you know, our next checkpoint is uh, 80 miles. We can set the odometer and, you know, GPS speedo is, is, is on there. Uh, my, my auto speedo and everything works on my analog gauges also, so uh, for driving quick, I can just, you know, look at that and then have my nice uh, function stuff over here and you, you can do fuel level you can do uh, you know, any, anything you can think of you can program with the, the new dash excellent super well this is outstanding uh thank you so much for letting me uh absolutely invade your space oh yes <laughs> and uh now i'll definitely come back for more advice because uh you definitely got this drag and drive thing down pat thank you yeah we have we have fun with it so i took eric's advice and ordered one of these 67 68 Camaro Firebird dash bezels. I got it from Summit Racing for $129 and it came in two days. So just for comparison, old, new, much better. Now let's just tape this thing up so I can mock it up in the dash frame. Okay, to bring me up to speed. I've got my gauge panel centered where I want it, drilled holes, and installed weld nuts for the mounting screws. My buddy Steve made a fill panel for the left side, and I fit some braces to the bottom frame so it keeps everything in place for cutting. Because there is some dash frame structure that I don't want to damage, and the roll cage dash bar is tucked up behind here, I'll be using a cutoff wheel instead of a plasma cutter for this. Warning, read and follow all labels and your owner's manuals. Now just a little metal manipulation here before we cut and form our aluminum panel. I need that panel to sit flat and flush with this top edge so that the dash pad fits properly. Okay, I gotta make a new one of these, except it's gonna go straight. Connect those two pieces together. That's why it was so critical that I put these braces in here to keep everything where it needs to be. I bent up a new bridge part to replace the bottom frame piece I cut out. It's 14 gauge material, so that's what I auto set the Multimatic 220 for. Just pulling this flange down and getting rid of it. Just doing that with this real old school C-clamp. It works great for this. You don't have to do it all in one shot. I'd like to do a little bit and then move down. See, it's gonna be nice and flat when I'm done. And this doesn't have to look perfect either because that, that dash pad comes over the top of this. Flat, even with that one. 
Now I'll take my measurements for the aluminum panel. Now to form this sheet to match the profile of the gauge bezel and the right side where the glove box is. I'm using my English wheel with the rubber tire trick that Mark McDonald used when he helped us modify the transmission tunnel. My wheel is a little different. It's got a flat face and is more of a particle rubber, which is a tad softer. I'm also using my second widest radius die on the bottom so I can sneak up on the shape, which I'm checking quite often with some templates I made. I just gotta bend this other lip the opposite direction. I'll probably do that on the brake. Okay, I made this bottom bend just with my brake. Uh, all I did was bump it every 3 16 quarter inch to put a, a little bit of a radius bend in it. I don't have a radius brake, so that's kind of what I'm left with. It's, uh, it's the bottom bend anyway, so not really gonna see it. What I'm gonna do now is put a step in the side so that the gauge bezel can sit on top of that and support that. Uh, it's gonna be almost a quarter inch step, so it's pretty thick. Um, it's gonna put a lot of tension in the piece also, so I've got my shrinker stretcher here and I'll have to stretch it after I'm done to uh, kind of make it lay flat. This is such a deep die that you've really gotta run this through multiple times. I also notice too that when I'm getting to this part where the radius is in, I'm trying to pull up on the piece so it keeps that radius. Otherwise, it wants to flatten it out. You don't need to stretch it a lot because if you stretch it too much, you'll flatten it back out. You don't want that either. See how that fits. Fits great. And believe it or not, that was the easy part. I still have to make the aluminum enclosure for the electronic dash. And I gotta modify the top dash pad to fit around the A pillar bars. And then that'll finish off this top edge real nice. For the digital dash enclosure, I'm using the same 063 thick 3003 aluminum. I'll be bending the two long sides in the back, then making the two short sides separately. So my first cut dimensions will be 11 and 3 8 inches by 9 and 1 16 inch. So I'm using 3003 aluminum because it's softer and easier to form. It's about the only alloy you can make this double 180 bend without it cracking. 
I'm doing this to give the edges a nice finish. For the short sides, the 180 bend has to be notched for clearance to fit flush inside the previous bends. For welding this 3003 material, I'm using 1 16th 1100 series filler. This part doesn't need high strength, and the 1100 alloy filler welds like butter and is easy to metal finish. Make sure you wire brush the weld joints with a dedicated stainless steel brush and wipe with acetone. For the outside corners, I've got my Multimatic 220 set for 65 amps, 70 for balance, and 100 hertz on the frequency. I like starting from the open end and running towards the base. This is when the metal is coolest and reduces the chance of melting the end away. I did bump up the amperage to 95 for the inside fillet welds. Oh, and clamping is key. All right, now a little metal finishing on the corners and we'll get ready to fit this thing in the car. Okay, we're semi done. I did get my dash pad trim to fit, but I still have to figure out my mounting holes for the display and data cables. And I gotta start working on my center console. Join us next time on Real Garage for another one of my shop optimization projects. We're also announcing some giveaways, so make sure you subscribe. You don't wanna miss the good stuff. Also, if you like our content, how about giving me that thumbs up? You might keep me in a job. <laughs>